Good afternoon and welcome to the winter edition of the Highlander News. I'm Ben Rosensteel. And I'm Kat Finsett. Right now we're walking around the Greater Cincinnati area to find the most festive spots of the season. Right now we're in Washington Park and you can just feel the holiday spirit in the air. I couldn't agree more. The snow is falling and winter is in full swing. With New Year's on its way, let's take a look back at 2017. A lot happened in 2017. We compiled a list of some of the most important events and defining moments of the year. On January 20th, one of the biggest surprises of the political world became a reality as Donald J. Trump was inaugurated as the 45th President of the United States. He beat out the projected winner Hillary Clinton in a surprising turn of events. Many Democrats decided against going to the inauguration, foreshadowing the political divisiveness of the new president. According to a survey conducted by NASA and the University of Michigan, 215 million American adults watched the Great American Eclipse. Taking place on August 21st, the eclipse was visible from coast to coast. This was the first time a full eclipse had occurred spanning the continent in 95 years, making it an event few would miss. Several tragedies also took place in 2017, one of them right here in the United States. On October 1st, 604 people were shot at the Harvest Music Festival in Las Vegas. 58 were fatally wounded and 546 others were injured, making it the deadliest mass shooting in United States history. However, this year people were also able to band together. In the wake of many sexual misconduct allegations, sexual harassment victims came together on social media with the hashtag MeToo. Right now out loud, Me Too. Many prominent figures have been accused of sexual misconduct in the public eye, including Matt Lauer, Al Franken, Harvey Weinstein, and even our own president. This spurred many to support the movement worldwide. This might be the most controversial item on the list, and we may be a little biased, but we think quite possibly one of the most monumental moments of 2017 was the birth of the baby hippo Fiona at our very own Cincinnati Zoo. Fiona was born six weeks premature. Few thought she would survive, yet with the assistance of the doctors and nurses at the zoo, she was able to make a full recovery. She is now able to walk, swim, and play on her own without any assistance. So here's to 2017, and to hoping the next year is even better. Thanks guys, it's been a wild ride this year, and I can't wait to see what happens in 2018. Speaking of wild rides, you don't have to wait until May to visit your favorite amusement park once again. That's right, Winterfest is back at Kings Island. We took a closer look. This weekend, we went up to Mason, Ohio to check out Kings Island's Winterfest. Winterfest had a successful 10-year run from 1982 to 1992, but unfortunately closed down due to change in ownership of the park. It returned for one short season in 2005, but once again never returned for the same reason. Now, 12 years later, it seems like Winterfest is here to stay. With over 50 fun attractions for families to enjoy, this holiday event is a must-see. To start off, the Eiffel Tower, which is already a staple for Kings Island, is decorated from top to bottom with hundreds of feet of string lights that dance to the music being played around the park. Underneath the Eiffel Tower is a market of shops selling stocking stuffers, gifts, and holiday-themed decorations. When you get to the park, as soon as you walk through the ticket gates, you immediately see the fountain, which has been froze over and turned into an ice skating rink for all to enjoy. The Peanuts characters, elves, and reindeer were scattered all over the park, and I got a chance to meet a couple of them. Also through the park, there are many live shows, such as the Mistletoes, the Holiday Sing-Along, and Let It Snow going on at various times to ensure the guests are always experiencing holiday music. The highlight of my time was watching the live ice sculptures. Also, next to that was the giant snow globe and snow slide. Although not every ride is open due to the cold weather, there are still a considerable amount of rides the guests can enjoy, including the new coaster to the park this year, Mystic Tempers. And of course, I couldn't consider my trip complete without a trip to see St. Nick. I got a picture with him and even a candy cane afterward. Kings Island also did a great job of representing all of the winter holidays, including Christmas, Kwanzaa, and Hanukkah. Each major religion had decorations dedicated to them, making this friendly to anybody who wants to celebrate this holiday season with joy. 
Even though I spent hours enjoying all that I could, this is only a fraction of the fun attractions there is to enjoy at Winterfest. It's open until December 30th, so be sure to check it out while you still can. Thanks, Bree. Ben, I know roller coasters aren't really your thing, but it looks like a lot of fun to me. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really not digging this bridge right now either. Are you sure you're okay up here, Ben? Yeah, yeah, the cookie helps. You know, I'm a big fan of holiday snacks, so I went down to the foods room to get awesome holiday recipes you can try on your own. Those snacks are super delicious, so be sure to try them over the break. I know our sports teams are working hard over the holidays since they are currently halfway through their season. How are they doing, Jack? Wait, where even are you, Jack? Hey, Kat. I'm here in Bellevue Hope Park in Clifton. Winter sports season has begun, and all the teams are performing excellently. Starting with the boys' basketball team, their goal this season is to improve upon their previous season and win district, region, and state. In both the boys' and girls' district, they have NCC, Bellevue, and Newport. Their current record is 2-4 and four and are led by returning seniors Griffin Hubert, Jacob Noe, Carl Schulman, Robbie Gabbard, Adam Eulenbrock, and new to the team, Tyler Gully. The boys play tomorrow at Mason County. Good luck, boys, on an excellent season. As for the girls' basketball team, they are led by Brooke Dill, Zoe Barth, and Chloe Jansen. Their goals for the season are the same as the boys and are to win district, then region, then state. Earlier this season, Coach Ritchie won her 300th game. Congratulations to her. The girls' current record is 5-1. and one. The girls have many home games in January and February, so make sure to come out and support the girls. The swimming and diving team season has begun as well. Last weekend, the swim team competed at the EKU Relay Meet. Both the boys' and girls' teams won the meet. The swim team is led by seniors Chas Sand, Garrison Herfel, and Savannah Brady. Good luck to the boys and girls on an excellent season. The cheer team has shifted from the football season to the basketball season. The team competed in Lexington on the 7th at the KHSAA State Event. They were led by seniors Ava Kunon, Macy Gibberson, and Zuri Carpenter. They were doing a great job keeping the ozone pumped up. Keep up the good work on an excellent season. The bowling team is currently undefeated. The boys team is led by seniors Hunter Kolb and Andy Campbell. The girls team is led by senior Caitlin Schneider. They have a match today against their rivals Campbell County. Their goals for the season are to have a fun season and to win state. Good luck to the bowling team this season. The dance team has also shifted seasons from football to basketball. As they prepare for the competition on the 17th, they are doing a great job rallying the Bluebirds and performing at halftime. Their KHSAA competition is on December 17th. The team is led by seniors Katie Buecher, Amanda Broering, Kaylee Kyle, Kelly Metzer, Madison Boberg, and Emma Ide. And now for the archer team. They are currently being led by Gabby Foster, Griffin Lechte, Emily Flodemersch, and Adam Gronick. The archery team is doing better than they expected, and several shooters have already placed. Keep up the good work, archery team. Back to you, Kat. Thanks, Jack. I wish the team's best of luck as they head into next year. A holiday tradition for years has been the Cincinnati Zoo's Festival of Lights. Mason and Sam got up there to get a closer look. What's up, guys? Mason and Sam here at the PNC Festival of Lights in the Cincinnati Zoo. Yeah, Sam, did you know they used 284 miles of lights to create this crazy light show? 
That's incredible. Hey, let's go check it out. This has also been the zoo's largest celebration with over 300 million lights being used. This holiday display was voted the number one best zoo light show by USA Today in 2015. This light show takes 5,000 hours for zoo workers to set up, so be sure to check it out next year. Thanks guys, that looks super fun. Absolutely, there's a lot of stuff to do this holiday season and that's certainly something to keep on your radar. With a lot of stuff to do these coming days, Stephen went around the school to find out what people are doing this winter break. I'm going to Costa Rica. Are you gonna be ziplining? No. Uh, I'm going down to take a trip to the Virgin Islands, uh, see the scenery, see the heads put down by the aliens. Uh, winter break. You know, I mean, if we start at Christmas Eve, right, we'll start there. I mean, go to church with my family. I mean, come back. We have a nice meal. I'm eating food. Delicious. I'm going to Florida. You know, well, uh, first day we get out, I'm probably going to go home and uh, sleep a little bit, you know, because all those exams. Then I really get in the mood, get my pine cones that smell like cinnamon, and I, I love to smell those, like, all the time. And then... We'll open gifts from family. That's always fun because get nice presents and usually my parents will get me like pajamas, really comfy ones and I wear those like Christmas Eve night and then I usually don't wear them ever again. All right, what are you two boys doing for uh, winter break? I'll probably be hanging out with my buddy Garrison, just shouting dilly dilly all the time, just having a good time, you know? Yeah, spreading Christmas cheer. After that, you know, I'll probably wake up and uh, mentally prepare myself for this D's Nuts indoor soccer game. Uh, hopefully gonna go skiing with Martin Foose at Perfect North. That'll be a blast. Um, I think I might get bangs, possibly dye my hair brown. I think it'd be a really good change for me. Um, I'm just looking for a good man who loves the zoo and wants to take me out to the Festival of Lights, so. Then, uh, then we have uh, another D's Nuts indoor soccer game on the 1st of January. So we're gonna start off the new year uh, really nice with a nice dub. 7 p.m. Uh, town and country, y'all can come. Then I gotta uh, sleep some more, you know, because then I gotta work for those grades again coming up third and fourth quarter because uh, Harvard don't want no fool. Well, it seems like holiday break is gonna be a blast this year. I'm excited for the rest, relaxation, and opening up some gifts on Christmas morning. What about you, Kat? I'm excited for some more snow and some hot cocoa. Absolutely. That'll do it for the final edition of the 2017 Highlander News. I'm Ben Rosa Steele. And I'm Kat Finsett. Happy holidays, Highlands. <laughs>